How's it going everybody? I'm Lewis and we've got a new poll from the Old School Runescape team so let's go ahead and vote in this poll. So this is Old School Priority Poll number 5. This is just to see what everyone's interested in and what the updates that the community want in the game are going to be. Once they got a good idea of what the updates we want then they can begin coming up with ideas and actually putting them in game. So let's start off with question 1. How important is low level player versus monster content to you? Now to me that's not very important. I always see player versus monster content as something for the higher levels and low level player versus monster content should just be concentrating on grinding up with slayer and stuff which we've got loads of in game. Question 2. How important is mid level player versus monster content to you? Very similar to question 1, it's not very important to me. I think mid level player versus monster content is fine at the moment. It's not too important, we've got a decent amount of it in game. Question 3. How important is high level player versus monster content to you? Now when it comes to high level player versus monster content, I feel this is a slight bit more important than low level and mid level, so I'm going to vote this is important. Question 4. How important is low level skilling content to me? Again, I think we've got plenty of low level skilling content. I'm sure someone can pull out a specific skill which is lacking. However, in general, I think it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and vote not very important. Question 5. How important is mid level skilling content to you? I think this is somewhat important. However, I don't think it needs a lot. We've got plenty of skills in game and if someone wants to do skilling, there's so many options. Similarly, question 6, how important is high level skilling content to me? Well, I think it's okay, but I don't think it should be a huge priority. So I'm going to say it's important, but it's not particularly hugely important. Question 7, how important are low level quests to you? Personally, I think quests have always been great content, and seeing as we did quite well with Monkey Madness Part 2, I think seeing more quests in game would be great. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is very important. Question 8, how important are mid-level quests to me? I think these should be a good priority. Mid-level quests are great. They don't have too many hard requirements, so it's not something that only the elite players can do, whereas it gives low-level players something to aim for to actually do. There's so many quests you can see and even have a look at in RuneScape 3 where you think this is a mid-level quest. It's not a huge, amazing quest. However, it's something people work towards, and I think that is what we should have in game. Question 9. How important are high level quests to you? Personally I think they're quite important but what I find a bit annoying about all these high level things are that they always have to better themselves. If you have a look at so many updates we've had in old school RuneScape it's always been about getting the best update, the best armor etc and admittedly we've not power jumped like RuneScape 3 did but we have power creeped so much since the game came out. I know things like the Dark Bow, the Abyssal Whip are still great weapons and they are something a lot of people want. However, there's so many more options now. Pretty much all of the top tier things that people use are from new content. So to me, high level content isn't actually that important compared to the mid level content. Question 10. How important are quality of life updates to me? Me, like so many people, I like quality of life updates. However, I kind of feel that we've gotten to a point where they're coming a little bit ridiculous. So I'm going to go ahead and say they're very important, because I do enjoy a lot of quality of life updates. However, there's so many updates which have been polled recently, which I just think this is ridiculously easy, and I don't think we should have it in game. Question 11. How important is player versus player content to me? Well, personally, I don't PK at all. So I'm going to say it's not at all important. Admittedly, if they do more player versus player mini games and stuff, I might be interested in that. But dangerous PvP in like PKing style, I'm not a fan of. Question 12. How important are player design competitions to me? I'm going to go ahead and say they're important. I quite like them. I enjoy the fact that we get to vote on them. However, I wouldn't say they're massively important because it's something that's fun. If they constantly did it, then it'll be a bit of a pain. And in a way, a lot of our content is player designed. It's just not every single little detail being player designed. Question 13. How important is solo content to me? I tend to play this game on my own so much. Like, I don't really have many people playing old school RuneScape with me. However, I kind of feel it's a bit sad when I look at solo content and I think there's no interaction there. I do enjoy going out and interacting with other players. It's just I haven't had too much time to do that recently. So I'm going to say it's not very important to me. 
Question 14. How important is group content to me? Again, this is something I can go either way with. I have done group content in the past. In RuneScape 3, I had a small to mid-sized clan, and that was very fun for me. However, it was always a pain to actually sort out group content and group events and stuff. So I'm going to say it's important. It's To me, it's more important than solo content. However, it's not very important to me. Question 15. Which of these updates is my first priority? So we've got a new skill, a new city, a new minigame, a new quest, a new boss, improving existing minigames, improving existing skills, improving player versus monster content, improving player versus player content, or a player designed content competition. Now, like I said previously, I would love quests to come into the game. When it comes to bosses, I think we've had plenty of those in old school RuneScape. We do have a new minigame coming out soon with the last man standing, so it's not a huge priority for myself. I kind of feel that they've overdone the new skill idea. I mean, everyone loves skills and they think, yeah, a new skill would be great. But when we've seen them try and do new skills in old school RuneScape, I kind of feel it hasn't really worked out. A new city is kind of a nice idea. Hopefully it'll be something they'll be adding to Zaya, but they're going to be doing Zaya content anyway. So I don't think that's got to be a jump in priority. Something I'd quite like to see is improvements to existing minigames. Main reason for that is, we've got things like, okay, let's say Nightmare Zone, that was the first old school RuneScape minigame, and it's okay, but it looks pretty terrible. I Really, when I'm voting on this, I'm thinking, improve the old school RuneScape exclusive content. So, like I said, Nightmare Zone, that could do with an upgrade. And we've also got so many empty minigames, and it'll be great to get people in there. I've heard so much about people sabotaging Castle Wars recently, Obviously, Clan Wars has been very popular, so whenever we add minigames, they are popular, they just need a little bit more care and attention. Question 16. Out of those updates, which is my second priority? I think I'm going to go for a quest here. I'm not a huge quester myself, however, I do know they're great pieces of content, and adding them to the game always is really good advertising for the game. Think about when Monkey Madness 2 came out, I saw so many icons and images that were trying to promote that. And yeah, that was a huge quest. I'd love smaller quests to come out as well, but they can still promote those like they did with Monkey Madness 2. Maybe not quite on the same scale, but they can save big scale promotion up for bigger quests. Question 17. Out of those updates, which is my third priority? You know what? I think I'm going to go for improving existing player versus player content here, which might sound a bit strange because I'm not really a player versus player kind of guy. However, I understand we do have quite a vocal player versus player community, and when you do look at that content, I mean, this is one of the re reasons I don't really do it, is it doesn't really appeal to me, and it's not very fun. So if they manage to improve it, even if it's something that didn't appeal to me, but appealed to everyone else, I think that would be good for the game. Question 18. If they were to release a minigame, what type of minigame would I most like to see? This is a hard one. I think... Something that I'm trying to think of is what mini games do they have in RuneScape 3 that we don't have in old school RuneScape? One of my favorites was definitely Stealing Creation. It was a very interesting game mechanic and obviously that had skilling, PvP. It didn't have player versus monster, but I think a mixture of all of the above would be quite good. Obviously, when people think of player versus monster mini quests, they might think of something like Soul Wars, which again, like Stealing Creation, is a very popular minigame from RuneScape 3, and so many people have asked for both those in old school RuneScape. And hey, you know what, it might be quite interesting if they manage to do a minigame based off those. Plenty of people have designed ideas for that, and all they have to do is look from the forums, Reddit, etc. for those ideas. I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to find something. Question 19. If they were to release a skill, which skill would we most like to see? So this is a mixture of old school skills they've suggested in the past, and RuneScape 3 skills. These are Artisan, Sailing, Dungeoneering, Summoning, and Animal Husbandry. And out of those skills, I think I'd prefer Artisan. However, I wasn't a huge fan of it, but just comparing the other skills. I mean, I quite like Dungeoneering and Summoning in RuneScape 3, but I don't think they fit the old school RuneScape vibe. Sailing, to me, is too much like Dungeoneering. Animal Husbandry, I can't really remember much of. Artisan was okay, despite the fact I didn't actually vote for it. But out of those five... That is the one I'd prefer. If only we had the skip question option on these questions. Question 20. If they were to release a city, what kind of city would we like to see? Would it be a city that finishes off in an existing area, like Profidinus or Menaphos? Would it be a city in a newly added area? 
such as Zaya? Would it be a city found on a completely new landmass, so potentially a new island? Maybe we could get Kudos Island like Varrock Museum promised years ago. And the final one, would it be an underwater city? Could be a quite very interesting idea. Obviously they've got a few underwater assets for the stuff from Recipe for Disaster, so that could be quite interesting, although walking around the city or swimming around might be a bit of a pain. And personally I think I quite like a city in a newly added area. Primarily that Zaya stuff. Obviously we said that the Zaya stuff's gonna happen, but I think we need more focus on Zaya to get it looking like an actual continent as opposed to one strange attempt to be a city, but really it's lots of different kingdoms. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the current Zaya map, but I'm hoping that they can update it and make it a lot better. Question 21. If they were to release a quest, what kind of quest would we like to see? Would it be a quest which continues an unfinished storyline, or would it be a brand new quest and storyline? I don't really mind either of these. Obviously we've got a lot of unfinished quest lines in Old School RuneScape, and it'd be nice to finish them. We've seen a few of them finished in RuneScape 3, so I don't know whether they would even attempt to do them. If they did, would they go along with the same story? I think Jagex want to keep a coherent RuneScape world, so they're more or less likely to keep the same story. Although, I know for a fact they're definitely worried about not getting the quest exactly how it is in RuneScape 3. If they go for a brand new quest, that could be very interesting. However, I'm worried slightly about what would they add. However, if they did that, I think the best part of expansion there could definitely be in Zaya. And again, like I said, I would love to see expanded Zaya. At the moment, it's just fairly dull. So I'm going to go ahead and vote for a brand new quest and storyline. Finally, question 22. Which of the following two types of content are we most interested in seeing in Old School RuneScape? Brand new unique to Old School, or content from 2007 onwards that doesn't exist in Old School, but obviously is in RuneScape 3? Again, this is something I don't hugely mind. Having content from RuneScape 3 is quite nice, and there's plenty of great content there. However, I kind of feel that has to be a cutoff point. Possibly many players would say things like 2012 when EOC came out. So, to be on the safe side, I think brand new content unique to old school is the best idea. And again, choosing that means that they can concentrate on Zaya and get that to actually to look like a decent continent. Let's go ahead, submit our vote, and then we can check out the results. So, as of this time, there have been 11,463 votes. And it looks like, in general, people think low-level player versus monster content isn't very important. Mid-level player versus monster content is important, and high-level player versus monster content is very important to should be a priority. Low-level skilling content isn't very important, mid-level skilling content is important, and high-level skilling content is very important. Low-level quests aren't very important, Mid-level quests are important, and high-level quests are very important, possibly even a priority. However, that's quite evenly spread there. Quality of life updates should be a priority. They are very important to us. Player versus player content isn't very important at all. There's a few people saying it's a priority compared to saying it's very important, but in general, it's not at all important. Player design competitions aren't very important. In fact, they're not important at all. Solo content is very important, possibly even a priority, and group content is important, but it's not very important. As for the list of updates that we think should be a priority, a new skill is still ranking as a very important thing we want, along with improving existing skills and new bosses and new quests. Our second priority is probably very similar to that, improving existing skills, improving player versus player content, and adding new bosses. And obviously the third most prioritized update will be similar to that, so improving new skills, player versus monster content, etc. When it comes to a minigame, we should really want a mixed minigame. However, skilling minigame is ranking quite highly there. When it comes to new skills, people want dungeoneering, followed by sailing, summoning, artisan, and then animal husbandry which you can easily expect. Summoning, whilst was okay, isn't massively old school, and there's not so many people asking for it. Dungeoneering, there are a fair amount of people asking for it, and sailing is quite similar. It's kind of like 
a unique old school take on it. So really there's no surprises there. When it comes to a new city, people want them to finish off existing areas. So obviously Prifinus and Menephos, and I think even Castle Draken could be finished off there. Finishing up, it looks like most people want quests to continue unfinished storylines. In fact, 66.6% .6 of players want that, as opposed to adding brand new quests and storylines. And funnily enough, when it comes to new content being added, most people want brand new content towards Runescape. 68.4% want that, as opposed to 31.6% want existing content from Runescape 3. Which is kind of funny because if you're continuing unfinished storylines, then you're definitely going to either have to clash with Runescape 3 or go alongside some of the content they did there. This whole priority poll is kind of what I expected. There's no huge surprises. It's interesting to see that Dungeoneering's ranked highly, but yeah, there's no huge surprises. The last priority poll they did similar to this asked if we wanted uh, high level, mid level and low level PVM, PVP and skilling content. And really, people want higher level content. Personally, I think they should aim for mid-level content because low levels can see that and go, I'm going to play for that. And then there is plenty of high-level content we've already got in game. So after you get to the mid-level content, you say, okay, I'm going to go for the high-level high content. If you've not voted in this poll yet, please make sure you go ahead and vote. This is obviously a community game and every single update is voted on by us, the community. If you want to watch my video on the last old school get poll, please click here for the skilling pets and quality of life. And if you want to watch my video on the latest Old School Runescape update, please click here for Broken Armor and Last Man Standing Open Beta. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share, and if you want to keep up to date with the Old School Runescape updates, dev blogs and polls, please subscribe. I've been Lewis, thanks for watching, goodbye.